We rounded third. We're heading for home tonight on Spaced Out Radio. My name is Dave Scott. Thank you so much for going on and coming in and listening to this show. We really do appreciate earning your listening ears. We want to remind you that if you've missed most of this show or others, check out our free archives by going to youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Just do me the favor, hit that subscribe button. Our website is spacedoutradio.com, where we have a plethora of features for you, including rocking out to Bumblefoot and reading up on Captain Shirk's SOR Newswire. Follow us on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio and on Instagram, Spaced Out Radio Show. It is now time for the unbiased UFO report. This is where we bring in our UFO reporter, Stetson John Hudson, to give us all the UFO news of the day as we try and keep caught up with all the big news. Because, you know, UFOs are still in the front line, not only here on this show, but around the system as well. The system of the media. John, welcome back, man. Good to have you here. Thank you very much for having me. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, no, just a quick comment. It's funny because when I first got into this, you'd only get a story every couple of weeks. It was really leisurely. Now, it's incredibly hard to keep up. (laughs) All right. Let's start off with this, man. Who is Chad Underwood? So Chad Underwood is, uh, in, in many ways, uh, a figure like like Alex Dietrich in that, there, that he came out in small amounts at earlier stages, but um, only in very limited um, situations, primarily because he, too, was still active duty. And so there had never been an actual full interview of him uh, where you actually got to see his face. I mean, we'd, we'd gotten quotes from him. Um, you know, th- you know, there had certainly been, um, you know, little snippets here and there. But um, this was the first time that someone actually had a chance to really sit down with him and have a full on conversation with the guy that, let's face it, took the video that might end up fundamentally changing the course of history. So how is he tied to UFOs? So, I mean, essentially he was the, um, the, the weapons, uh, you know, basically the, you know, most of these planes, you know, have a, have a, a primary pilot and the co-pilot and the co-pilot takes care of, of all sorts of operational things, targeting and, and sort of things. And also manages the FLIR, uh, pod, the weapons pod on, on the bottom of the plane. And so he was actually the one that, um, actually, you know, actually recorded the footage, uh, of the Tic Tac. So he he is the actual you know the actual you know person who filmed you know one of the most famous you know pieces of of footage in in history so far. Oh wow! So he got the original recording of the Tic Tac that we we hear the pilots talking in the background. Uh, well, the what, the ones where we hear the pilots talking in the back one, where they're like, "Oh, look at the thing! Oh, there's a squad of them off." That's actually the um, the um, the gimbal. Uh, but the original Tic Tac, where you just see the the white object, um, I, I don't. I, there, what, there, there was some talking. That's right. There was some talking. God, it's been. You hear. Let's watch so many versions of that. But it, the original Tic Tac video from two thousand um, from two thousand four. This is the guy that actually took that footage. Very cool. So, what's his stance on the UFO phenomena then? Well, I mean, he is. You know. It, I really like how he how he tends to play this because he's very, very specific on the points of why this is so abnormal and why this is so different and why this doesn't fall into any previous um, uh, data sets of, of recognized behavior out of machines. Um, you know, he talks about, um, you know, the the, um, the the jamming aspects of it. Um, uh, you know, the, he talks about, you know, um, you know, the ability of, of this, you know, the slave radar and being able to, you know, actually catch the FLIR footage. He talks about, um, and, you know, I just want to give a quick nod to, to, um, not only to Jeremy for doing this, but for, for a, a user by the name of Alpha Check who, who did some, some good, um, some good synopsis of this today. And essentially, um, you know, he, for, you know, my read off of him is essentially, 
you know, he's not saying it's, you know, it's definitely a UFO. He's not saying it's, it's definitely aliens. He's not saying anything of the sort. He's, he's definitely playing a, a careful line. But once again, like, like Alex Dietrich, he's basically pointing out, look, you know, these are things that uh, are, are incredibly abnormal. And these are the reasons why they are incredibly abnormal. And so he's a very, very good witness. He's a very strong witness. And he essentially, you know, lays out some, you know, some some nice, you know, facts and, and data points that kind of illustrate, you know, what his experience was and, and you know, uh, you know, what about it, his attention in the process. Now, of course, I mean, it's been, you know, it's been a long time now. And so, you know, they've all been talking about it for years. So it's, it's not as good as having a, a fresh account of it. Um, but, uh, you know, I would argue that, um, you know, that he, he's, um, you know, he's every, he's every much as important of a, of a figure in that encounter as, uh, as commander Fravor or, or, or Alex Dietrich. How long did he serve for? Was this his only incident? Uh, my understanding was that this was his own well you know what i take that back i'm you know i'm i'm not totally sure on that I, my understanding was was that this was a unique incident for him but i don't know if he said anything differently recently um and uh, and so it wasn't like what we saw before where they talked about you know seeing it on a daily basis and and, and that sort of thing um but um you know it, it's and as far as um you know i i believe well, i mean if he was um I mean, so if he, so, he was active in 2004, and he only recently got out. This is someone who served for quite some time. I mean, at least 15 years. Interesting. All right, let's move on here to number two, which is the Wilkinson documents resurfaced by somebody named Brit in Wonderland. Tell me about this. So. This is a this is wonderful. That I, I cannot I more highly recommend that people go check this out, especially because she nails it all down in eight minutes flat. And basically what she what she shows is that there was a a law basically put into place that went into place um in in 2017. And the what what the law did was essentially take the DOD um, acquisitions, uh, ac acquisition technology lo logistics organization and split it into two separate organizations. And this happened in 2018. And what I, I can't go over in the extreme detail for, for the sake of time, but, but I, I will, I'll post the link to her, her video and I encourage everyone to watch it. And I should note out that she, uh, passes off nods to, uh, to James over, at, um, engaging the phenomenon and as well as, uh, uh Frank, uh, Milburn, uh, as far as people who helped her, um, you know, lock down the story and, and she continues to do so. But basically this bill was introduced to the floor by John McCain. And so the hypothesis that she puts forward is that the result of what Wilson experienced in the Wilson memo was likely experienced again by Elizondo and Mellon in the future. And that they very likely communicated that frustration to McCain as well as, um, uh, you know, you know all, all the other you know people that were in the, involved at that point and that it was possibly, and this is what she's trying to find evidence for, it was possibly a very clear tie that essentially this bill was introduced by John McCain and passed specifically to combat the challenges they were having with getting access to information about SAP programs, because what they discovered was a lack of oversight, which is what this bill is supposed to address. And so it's a very interesting hypothesis. She lays it out very cleanly, and uh, she she adds a bunch of other details that that, that you'll catch when you watch her video. But it, it's a it's a it's a really cool detailed take on the story that kind of you know ties a bunch of pieces together and some brings a, a new light to to what we're talking about. Well, that's really interesting. I'm just surprised the Wilson documents keep coming up, John. For our audience who doesn't understand or know what we're talking about regarding the Wilson documents, take a minute or two here to quickly break those down. Okay. 
So, um, and I can post links to these as well because I, I got very irritated by the way they were getting shown. They were in like lots of different sheets. So I put them all together into individual PDFs. And, and so we, we, can, we can take a look. But specifically the part that she's referring to is essentially a, um, it's a, uh, it's a point by point re um, uh, recording essentially of a alleged meeting that Dr. Eric Davis, who we all know and love, had um, in a car um, with uh, with um, uh, I forget what uh, what rank Wilson was at the time, but um, with Wilson, who was uh, who was uh, who was J two, um, uh, you know, when he did all this exploration, and essentially what the what the Wilson memo lays out is essentially the conversation that Wilson and um, and Dr. Eric Davis had, where Wilson explains to Davis what he went through, uh, the challenges he had, the pushback he got, the threats that he got, the information that he was given, and um, and basically lays out you know in it's 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 the challenges and the reason why why you described it the way you did when this when you first asked me is is it is a very very difficult piece of material to digest right uh it's 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 one of the most shocking documents i personally think i've ever read and so it's it's very hard to believe it it's very hard to believe it but over time more and more people are standing up for it more and more well known well established people are standing up for it and and less and less of the of the holes getting shot through it are are standing up to bear and so um you know at this point i'm as as hard as this is for me to believe at this point i am leaning toward believing those documents are authentic and one of the things that she points out in her little segment is is it what she's uncovering is also further support for the fact that the Wilson documents are real. All right. We have time for one more topic. Popular Mechanics did a great story on USOs. Start off by explaining to our audience what a USO is first. Oh, yes. Um, so um, so for some reason, um, we had to start calling UFOs UAPs, but it's still okay to call something a USO which I think is a little unfair, but essentially what it is, is it's, it's an unidentified submerged object. So this is an object that basically comes out of the ocean or comes out of a lake. And we've been hearing reports of this forever. We've seen all sorts of photographs that no one knows if real or not of things coming out of the water. We've had numerous reports of things coming out of the water. Even Commander Fravor reported seeing something bubbling under the water in the in the Nimitz encounter. Uh, however, we've gotten uh, we've heard stories about submarines picking them up. We've heard stories about speeds, but it's all been very anecdotal. It, there has not been much hard evidence for it, even though it's it's pretty much a foregone conclusion for most researchers. And popular mechanics just went out there and just um, laid down very methodically um, a case for why USOs are real and uh, included both um, some witnesses they found um, uh, as, as recently as uh, 2017 and uh, as well as going back to cases in the 60s. And so they laid out, you know, I, I, I can't say that there was anything, you know, any breaking news that there was new you know, tidbits that, that, I think were unheard of in, in what they wrote, but it was a, it was a point blank. It was a brave article for them to write. And um, it was a good article for them to write. And it's a clean article and it's well done and it, it presents a good case. And, uh, and hopefully what it does is it, it gets people to start feeling a little more comfortable talking about USOs because it's kind of ridiculous that, that people are still shy away from that, but are willing to talk about the other. You know, what amazes me is these USOs seem to be taken off into the sky. So is there really a difference between UFOs and USOs if they seem to be able to go in any type of condition here on Earth? Well, the fact that one of the five observables is specifically a transmedium ship, what that means is what you just said is exactly right. There, there is no distinction. You're not going to get um, uh, unidentified vehicles that can they can only go in water and and can't go and or can only go in water and air but can't go into orbit or can only go into air and orbit but can't go into water. Um, and basically, if the hypothesis that many of us have 
that essentially there is a um, a type of um, something akin to a warp bubble around this craft that gives them a different um, uh, reference point from a from a, a relativity point of view. Then essentially. Uh, by masking it from inertia and masking it from from all that activity, um, it should be able to go through uh, atmosphere, air, or water, or to be very blunt, it should actually be able to go through solid objects. For sure. John, big thank you for coming on the Unbiased UFO Report. Once again, if people want to check it on out, they can always check the replay on our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio. And John, one quick thing uh, tomorrow at 6 p.m. Eastern, uh, sorry, 6 p.m. Pacific, my apologies, where I'm going to be trying out something new, see how it goes. It'll be a live Twitter space where um, everyone will be invited to come in and basically talk about any of the different news articles that we talked about this week or bring up others that maybe we didn't cover that you wish we did. Interesting. Very, very interesting. John, thank you so much. And let me know about that. I'm going to want to attend that too. So make sure you check that out and put it in our Facebook group at uh, you at facebook.com uh, forward slash groups forward slash spaced out radio. John, we'll talk to you in a couple nights. Absolutely, sir. You have a good evening. Yeah, let's get to the news, everyone. <laughs> 